very much Thai culture is, you know, is it has mixed very strongly with with Buddhism. So and we don't have that in the Western part. Uh, like Western cultures mixed very, you know, mixed with Judaism or Christianity is the are the religious attitudes that you that influence a European or Western world. So living in a in a Thai society, which is very different from from one's own. And you begin to, you know, with mindfulness, with the development of mindfulness, then you begin to to see through a lot of your own cultural biases or assumptions that we make. And so, you you know, the conditioning process begins from birth, really. You know, you you say a newborn baby is conscious. And it's, uh, but it's not conditioned to think of itself as Thai or British or German or anything like that. You get that later. You, you find out you don't even identify with the gender of your body. Like a baby, it, it doesn't see itself as a boy or girl. You acquire that information through your mother usually or your father, your, your peers, brothers and sisters. You acquire the values the biases, the prejudices uh, of the family, family condition, the, the social status you're in, the, the area of the country, has, each area has its own particular cultural attitude. And then emphasize this is a conditioning process. You're not born with that. You're not born English or Thai. <laughs> or even with a, even with a, a gender identity, but you notice nowadays the, that the uh, emphasis is on uh, you know equality, <laughs> trying to make all conditions equal, and so this is this is. Uh, a big theme in, in Buddha, living in the West is because we're in a hierarchical structure, a traditional structure that's based on seniority, not on ability. It's not based on ability, but on seniority, who is ordained first. So it is, isn't about who's the best monk or the most worthy monk. It's, uh, you know, the Vinaya is about paying respect to the most senior Bhikkhu and so forth. And so the structure is, is based on that. And that's established by the Buddha, you know, so it's an ancient tradition that, you know, encourages us to, to, uh, not be caught in our own personal likes or dislikes about who, who, who we're going to bow to. If we don't like them, I'm not going to bow to them. We, we see that as as a kilesa, as a as a ego problem, <clears throat> but we it's, it's automatic. You you pay respect to the most senior bhikkhu in the sangha at the time, and notice how because they're all from so many different countries, different backgrounds. It's the thing that unites us as a sangha. It's not our cultural conditioning. It's our Refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha. It's the Vinaya. We we all <coughs> subscribe to the Vinaya rules as our form. It's a form that a traditional form that's been carried on for two thousand five hundred years. And we all, when we take Upasambada or high road in Asia, and then we we're admitted into that Sangha where the Vinaya is part of the training. It's the the form of the Sangha is Vinaya, and then we practice mindfulness, sati, sampachanya, samatha, vipassana, meditations, to, to you know, because we're, we're all, we're together, we're united in the form, in the form of the Vinaya, and that saves a lot of conflicts, 
saved us from a lot of conflicts about what I think or what an American approves of or what a Thai likes and doesn't like and we can argue about politics and economics and culture and art and all the worldly conditions endlessly you know there's all kinds of um, problems around opinions and views of individuals but in terms of the Vinaya then we, we learn to submit to that form but not kind of in a passive way we're using it for mindfulness to be aware of, a, uh, of how we react to the, to the structure the hierarchical structure the Vinaya rules because we're not just trying to condition you recondition you into a Buddhist monk but using a form because the, the Buddha established uh, when when he were, knew he was going to pass on, you know, then Ananda, his disciple, uh, said, "What are we going to do when when you're gone, Master? We won't have a teacher." And, and he had said, "I leave you the Dhamma and the Vinaya." And Dhamma doesn't have any form, you know. It's not culturally tainted. It's not Asian or Thai or European. It's not, you know, it's 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 not doesn't have any characteristics or values or qualities but it's here and now Santiti Kodama Akari Kodama Timeless and then it's uh, Hedi Pasi Kodama encouraging to investigate to, to awaken to Dhamma in the, in, the, in the moment here and now and so it's not about adopting Thai culture as, as Dhamma but the Thai culture is what we're living in and, and it's very much attuned like the Sangha in the Thai forest which is very much attuned to the Thai social values the whole Thai culture is supportive of, of our endeavors to practice meditation so it's a, you know living in Thailand is a very good opportunity to to put into perspective your own cultural assumptions, biases, prejudices, in terms of seeing them as for what they really are, as conditions arising, ceasing, rather than as right or wrong, good or bad, and relating, relating to them on a kind of highly personal uh, attitude. Because Dhamma is, is universal, it's not, it's not separative. You know, it doesn't favor one condition over the other, but all their all conditions are impermanent, and we have to investigate that because you can, you know, you can grasp the teaching from the scripture. All conditions are impermanent. You can grasp the teaching, but you don't really haven't investigated to prove that to yourself. You more or less adopt what you see in the scripture, and then. Uh, Vipassana meditation is actually getting to the root and beginning to see notice just the simplicity of arising, ceasing in, in moods in mood swings uh, uh, that you might be experiencing emotional con conditioning or your own thinking patterns so I, I lived in the UK for 34 punches most of my life was spent there and as a Buddhist monk I never went to England as a lay person though so I lived in in, uh, in London for two years and then in Chitwa, Sussex and Hertfordshire and, uh, and that's also a contrast to the American conditioning because it's very different you know the attitudes and Assumptions of the Brits are quite different from the Americans, and so you know you you see it not in terms of preferring one over the other, but in terms of it's the way it is, and you you get you break through a lot of your own cultural biases or, or assumptions you make from just the cultural conditioning. You know that you tend to interpret experience through certain distorted cultural biases and, 
and you begin to see the, the suffering you create when you do that. 